Hello, welcome back. So at last, we're on to the last class of this very long valuation reading. But the good news is that all we need to do now is cover the yield spreads and we're done with this. So let's get started then. So a yield spread, all this is is a difference between the yield to maturity on a bond, let's say it's a corporate bond, so we'll put a scene over there, and the yield to maturity on a benchmark bond, which is normally a government bond, so we'll put in a G over there. So to get the yield to maturity on the corporate bond, all we need to do is take the yield to maturity on the benchmark government bond here and then add a spread. So the, the yields on the benchmark government bonds, they are determined by macroeconomic factors, you know, things like the expected rate of inflation, what's the economic growth rate of the country like, what's the GDP growth, um, and then the forex rates, and also, you know, what currency is the bond denominated in, and then what's the monetary and fiscal policies of the government. So what we're going to be doing in a moment is looking at a nice little practical example of this to explain this. But let's just finish the slide first, then we'll go back and do that little example. So the yields on the benchmark government bonds, they are risk-free rates of returns. You can see here we've got the risk-free in inverted commas. Why? Because it's as in no default risk. Of course, the bonds, they do have interest rate risk because, you know, as, we, as we've seen, you know, when yields change, then the prices change, but there's no default risk. Why? Because if we think way back to the previous reading, when we did all those definitions and we looked at the government bonds, we called them the sovereign bonds, we said they don't have default risk because the government, they can always raise taxes, you know, if they can't pay back the money or if worst comes to worst, they can print money to, to print currency to pay back the bonds. So that's why there's no default risk. And then what another way to look at it is that we can take the expected real risk-free rates. Remember the real rate from economics? That's the rate after inflation. And if we add the rate after inflation plus the expected inflation, that's another way then to get that risk-free rate of return. Good. So now the, the, micro, um, the micro or the firm specific factors, that determines the spread of the corporate bond over the government bond. So we need to look at things like, you know, what's the credit risk of the issuer like, what's the liquidity risk of, of the issuer and, and the bond, and what's the tax status of the bond. So of course, the higher these risks are, um, the higher the risk premium needs to be to compensate investors for that extra risk. And then the, that higher the spread there is gonna be over and above the government bond. And these risks are actually in, in, in order of importance because credit risk is the most important thing, then liquidity risk and the tax rate is not really that vital, but it still is it's still one thing we got to consider. Okay, so let's quickly then ha have a look at this example we were promising. So if we remember back to the previous class, when we looked at the yield curve, let's just go back there quickly. Where, where's our yield curve now? There we go. So remember, we, for example, we looked at the 10 year South African government bond and we see its yield there is about 9%. So let's just go back here quickly. It's um, 9%. We can just plug that in there. So that is now if we're looking, so if we're going to be looking at a 10 year corporate bond, we would then take uh, the, the benchmark, the government, the government 10 year yield is 9%. And let's say, we've got to add an extra 2% because the company is more risky uh, than, the, than the government. So then the yield on that 10 year corporate bond would be 11%. Right, and now this is what I wanted to, to discuss just for a minute uh, is that you remember, remember we mentioned that in America, that the 10 year, uh, that the 10 year US government bond was only yielding about 1%. So the required yield on that is only 1%. So in South Africa, you know, the government's got to pay 9% on their bonds. And this was in July, 2020. And um, I'm recording now in uh, December, 2020, but not, nothing's really, it's still pretty much the same. And the American yield, it's, it was 1% in July, still around about 1% now. So why is the South African government bond yield so much higher than the US government bond? Well, 
US government bond yield? Well, it's because of these factors. Yes, in South Africa's got higher inflation, so they've got to pay um, high yields. Our economic or, or South Africa's economic growth, it's much lower than America. Even you know, before COVID came along, the economy was doing poorly, as we know. So therefore, the bonds have to pay higher yields in South Africa compared to America because of the extra risk. And then the currency, so that South African government bonds, are, of course, are in RAND, which is an emerging market currency, risky currency. Uh, and so therefore, there's more risk. And then the uh, US government bonds, of course, are in dollars, which is a much lower risk currency. And then uh, the monetary policy, um, well, rates are low every, everywhere, really, even in South Africa. So the, the, the Reserve Bank or the Central Bank, they say they've done all they can you know, in terms of keeping interest rates low. But this is the problem in South Africa. The fiscal position, like we know, is very weak. So. Um, in the last medium term budget policy statement, which was in October 2020, the debt to GDP, it was that ratio was 80%. And they were projecting it to, to go to 100%. So we know that the debt as a percent, the total debt of the government as a percentage of GDP, you know, it's round about, they're predicting it to get up to 100%. So it's very, it's very high, the debt is so high. So that's why the main reason why the South African government bond yields is high, are so high because of that risk of the high debt that the government has got. Right, so that is why those yields are so high. Anyway, that was just that wasn't that was just more for a little bit of interest. As we said, from time to time, we need to have a little bit of fun. Uh, so let's just then do a little example, and we we'll see how easy this is. We've got here uh, a three-year corporate bond. It's got a yield to maturity of four and a half percent, and the three-year government bond, the yield to maturity is three point two five percent. So the so the spread of the government bond over the corporate bond is going to be 1.25% or 125 basis points. Because remember, 1% is 100 basis points. So we call this a G spread. So it's the yield spread of a government, it's the yield spread over the government, over the government bond. And the government bond benchmark, it's usually a, what we call an on the run, which is a recently issued bond. That's the best one to compare the corporate bond yield to. Then we also get what we call an I spread or an interpolated spread. So this is the yield for a bond. Let's, let's say it's a corporate bond again. We'll put a scene over, scene over there. It's the yield spread for a corporate bond over the standard interest rate swap rate of the same tenor and currency. So the tenor is the same maturity. So, so let's say we've got uh, the yield on a corporate bond. Let's say it's 7% over here. And let's say it's a five-year bond and the five-year swap rate is five let's call it five percent so then that spread of course it's going to be two percent so if they ask this on the exam you know just make sure that you you take the corporate bond yield and you subtract the the, the interest rate swap rate don't subtract the government bond yield if they're asking for the in the I spread because they might try and trick us because normally when we think of spreads the first thing that jumps to mind oh we just need to compare the corporate bond to the government bond but this is not the case with this one and we're going to talk more about the swap rate and when we get to the derivatives uh, study session good and then the last one the floating rate notes we know those ones, hey, we know them. They normally use the LIBOR as the benchmark rate. Although uh, LIBOR is being phased out, they expect it to be phased out either end of 2021 or sometime in 2022. But for now, um, we can still go with, with LIBOR like we've been doing. Right, so now the last spread we need to look at is the zero volatility spread. It's also called the Z spread or the static spread. So this is a, a spread that is based on the entire benchmark spot curve. So this is a benchmark spot curve down here of the treasury or the government spot rates. Um, so what it is, it's the constant spread. So that's why they call it static, or static means constant. So it's the, it's the constant spread that must be added to the entire benchmark spot rate so that the present value of the bond's cash flows equals the bond's price over here. So what we're going to do 
Let's have a quick look at this formula, and then we'll come back and, and redo this in a, in a little bit slower. So let's have a look at our formula. So here's our bond price. Remember, it's just the present value of the future cash flows. Now, the, the, the lowercase z's here, like the z1 there and the z2 over there, they are the benchmark spot rates that we get from the benchmark yield curves, like the government bond rates that like we've been talking about. So we can also call them Zs because if they spot rates, they are the zero coupon government bond rates. Right, so now if we uh, come back to our, our wording here, we see this, the Z spread, it's the constant spread over here, which is now gonna be the uppercase Z in red over here that must, must be added to each of these benchmark spot rates, right? So in other words, we've got to add on something here to these government benchmark rates, okay? And, and why is that? That is because if we're going to be discount, if we want to, if we're going to be discounting a corporate bonds cash flows, we can't discount them at the government rates. Why? Because these rates are too low. The corporate bond has got more risk than the government bond has got. So we need to discount the corporate bond at a higher yield to get it to its price. So, so let's say the bond's price in the market is 97, right? We, that we can, that, that information is known. So, and then the payment, we, we know all of those. Those are just the coupons. And then the future value is the part, the end. And then these lowercase z's, these are the government bond rates for the different time, time periods. So we've got all the information we need. And now we've got to solve for z. Okay, but don't stress because we say down here, we don't have to calculate it. So let's just then um, just do it one more time. So we can see what it is now. It's the constant spread that must be added to each of the government spot rates down the bottom over here. So that the present value of the cash flows over here, this is this side of the equation, the present value of the bonds cash flows here equals the bonds price. So um, where I've put ticks, that is all information that we can get or gather. And then all we, I, I say all, but but what to, to get the, the, the spread then, is then we have to solve for that Z. So it's the um, spread that must be added then because the, the corporate bonds are more risky. Um, so we, we can't discount them at the government bond rates. We've got to discount them at a slightly higher rate, right? So that the, so that the present value of the bonds cash flows equals their price. So as I was saying, here's the good news, right? We don't have to calculate the Z spread. We, all we need to know is, is what it is, like, like we've discussed. And then and a big advantage of the Z spread now is that it's based on the entire benchmark spot curve. So it's the entire yield curve over here of all different maturity bonds. Um, so it's not just a specific maturity rate like the G spread we did on the previous slide. We remember we looked there on the previous example at a three-year bond, and that three-year bond was, I think it was 3.25%. So what we were doing in that example, let's just put in here 3.25%, 3.25. What we were assuming in that in that example, that was a three-year bond. We were saying that 3.25%, that represents all government bonds, but it doesn't really, right? So that's why this is that's why this is preferred. So all we then do is we take the, the government spot rates over here, we add the Z spread, and that's going to then give us the yields on the corporate bonds. Okay, dokes. So I put in the C there for the corporate bonds. And now that we just need to do one last thing and, and we're done with this. We're going back to our old friend over here, the callable bonds, remember the callable bonds? They have got higher yields than option-free bonds. Why? Because the bonds can be called away from the investors by the issuer. So they need to have high yields to compensate investors for the extra risk. So. Um, now what we're going to look at is this thing called the option adjusted spread. This removes the option yield component of a callable bond from the Z spread. 
So let's just stop here for a minute and talk more a little bit, of, talk a little bit more about this Z spread. So the Z spread, it's the spread for three risks. We can think of it as three risks. It's the, uh, the credit risk, the liquidity risk, and the option risk of the bond. So what we're gonna do now is we, with the option adjusted spread, we're gonna remove that third risk, the option risk. So now the option adjusted spread, it's gonna be that we're removing the option risk. So we're gonna subtract here the option value and that's gonna be the option adjusted spread. So now there's gonna be less spread with the option adjusted spread because there is less risk. The option risk has been taken out. So like I was saying, let's just look at this point. This will explain it. This will explain it well. This means that the option adjusted spread is the spread only for the higher credit and the liquidity risks of the bond compared to the benchmark government bond. Why? Because that other risk we spoke about, the option risk, it has been removed. Right. So Let's just, let's just say it again, we, option adjusted spread, we've got three risks, we've got the credit risk, we've got the liquidity risk, and we've got the option risk. So the option adjusted spread, we remove then the option risk. So now the option adjusted spread is only the spread then left for the high credit risk and the high liquidity risk of the bond compared to the government bonds. If we go back here to the, the previous slide, there was the Z spread, which was taking into account those three risks, the credit risk, the liquidity risk and the and the option risk of the bond of the of the corporate bond compared to the government bond now the option adjusted spread would look something like this why because all we're doing is we are removing the option risk so now the option adjusted spread this is now the the spread only for the credit risk and the liquidity risk of the bond okay doke. so that that's all it is and now the last point here is that this is useful because it can be used to compare the spread of a bond that does have a call option to a bond that does not have, because not all of them, not all bonds are quotable. Um, so if we, if we use that spread, then um, we, the option effect will be removed from the bond that does have an option. And then we can compare apples with apples. So let's just then end off with this nice little example here. And we'll see it's not so bad. Um, we've got a callable bond now. The Z spread is 140 basis points. So that's the spread for the for the credit risk, liquidity risk, and the option risk of the bond. The call option value is 50 basis points. So this means the option adjusted spread, we're just gonna take out the, the, the option risk there, and it's gonna be then 90 basis points. So if we go back then one last time to the previous slide, the Z spread was 140 basis points there, or 1.4%. Okay, do, okay, dokes. And then the option adjusted spread is going to be here. So if we remove the option risk, then it's it was 90 basis points. Hey? So let's put in a 90 over there. Okay. So with if that without the uh, without the option risk, the the option adjusted spread it's going to only going to be 90 basis points, not 140. Excellent. So. Um, at last, <laughs> we're done then with this very long valuation reading, but all we need to do, you know, is practice our examples, like we always say, do all our questions, and if you've got any questions for me, let me know, and we'll help you, and then we'll see you guys in the next class. Hello, it's Tim here again. I hope you enjoyed the class and found it beneficial. We have some classes available for free on YouTube, but we have classes for the entire curriculum. The classes that are not on YouTube can be purchased from us. If you'd like to purchase the classes, please contact us for the pricing, and I've put our contact details over here. You can purchase all the classes or certain readings that you would like. When you purchase the classes, we provide you with the slides and our notes. I've assisted hundreds of candidates pass CFA exams, and I look forward to also helping you through the CFA program. I've put in two testimonials in the slide over here, and we also have a testimonials page 
at on our website that you can review. I look forward to seeing you soon and all the best.